Today's scripture comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 10 through 28. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, listen and understand. It is not what goes into your mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into the pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that moment. The word of God for the people of God. I invite you to join me now in just a few moments of silence as we get ready for our message for today. Um, this is our time to talk to God and to let God talk to us. So we'll take a few seconds here. Amen. So an experiment took place to see what would happen if the fence was taken down at a preschool playground. The theory was that once the chain link fence was removed, the children would feel more freedom to move around. To their surprise, when the fence was removed, the children did not wander off. They didn't even go to the edge of the preschool playground. Instead, they all huddled in the center of the playground. The children found security in the boundaries of the fence. As we get older, I think we can all agree we still need boundaries, don't we? And Jesus speaks of boundaries in our passage today in his response to the complaint of the Pharisees towards his dirty-handed disciples. He gives us the parameters for where our focus should be. We learn that our focus should be on the word of God, on what's inside of us, and on our hearts. The first thing that Jesus describes is our focus on the word. On, for Jesus, this was the most important thing to focus on. Up to this point, Jesus did some extraordinary things. He 
gave some pretty striking teachings. And these things that Jesus taught and did, they disturbed the Pharisees. So much so that at the beginning of Matthew 15, we find that they have made a trip from the temple in Jerusalem to Galilee. And they don't focus on the miracles. They don't focus on his teachings. They focus on what Jesus isn't doing. They ask Jesus, why do your disciples disobey our age-old tradition? They ignore the tradition of ceremonial hand-washing before eating. Now, this age-old tradition that they're speaking of wasn't written down. It was known as oral law. Laws made by esteemed rabbis and passed on orally to generations. The Pharisees pretended to put oral law on the same level as scripture. Because the Pharisees were the religious elite, what they said was right. The source they chose, it didn't matter. The ritual of hand washings was one such extra biblical tradition thought to be adopted by the practice of foreign Jews. The Pharisees used this tradition as an opportunity to imply a deficiency in the way Jesus was training his disciples. Jesus throws this right back at them and says, why do you, by your traditions, violate the direct commandment of God? While his disciples may have been a bit lax on the oral tradition of hand washing, and the context of this is they were plucking grains of heads of grain while they were walking through a field and eating them. That's why they didn't wash their hands. But the Pharisees were th allowing flagrant loopholes in some of the written laws, and Jesus comes armed with a specific example saying to them, God says, honor your mother, father and mother. And anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. But then you turn around and say that it is all right for children to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you. I have vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. And this is a sneaky way of saying there's no need to honor your parents. This is oral tradition being used to cancel the word of God. And then Jesus dares to do it. He dares to use the H word. He calls the Pharisees hypocrites. And he does this with good reason. As spiritual leaders, they were spiritually bankrupt. They put on a good show outside, but inside they were empty. The Pharisees led people to believe that their own ideas are what God commands and they willingly prioritize their own authority over God's. So why should our focus be on God's written word? Well, first, God's word gives us strength. God's word gives us guidance. When we focus on God's word, it gives us the strength to avoid sin. And how does God's word do that? Well, it helps us in times of temptation. We receive ammunition to fight against evil. Our hearts grow steadfast. The word is the light that shines in the darkness. God's word is the light that highlights who we really are, the areas of our life that need to change and how to do that. God's word shows us how to live. Now next, Jesus show, tells the crowd that it is more important to focus on what's inside. You see, the Pharisees, they placed a lot of importance on the outside. And what Jesus had to say about this is so important that he uses a common idiom of the day to preface it. Listen and try to understand. This meant that the next words out of Jesus' mouth would be super important. He tells them, it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Well, this wasn't difficult to say, but it sure was difficult to follow. All they ever heard to this point was taking care of the outside. So Jesus completely contradicts what the Pharisees were teaching. It was not ceremonial cleansing that produced godliness. Now, this worried the disciples. When they told Jesus, do you realize you offended the Pharisees by what you just said? What they were really saying was, Take it easy, Jesus. You're going to get us all in trouble. <laughs> Jesus knew that he was undercutting the foundation of the Jewish legal system. He knew 
In fact, he counted on the fact that the Pharisees would be greatly offended. But Jesus was more interested in speaking the truth than trying to win influential allies. His response to the disciples' questions shows just how unconcerned he is. Every plant not planted by my heavenly Father will be uprooted, so ignore them. They are blind guides leading the blind, and if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into the ditch. Now Jesus is actually mocking the Pharisees by calling them blind guides because the Pharisees refer to themselves as leaders of the blind. See, God is much more concerned about what is inside a person and knows how to look for what he wants. God is not concerned about our clothes, not concerned about our hair, not concerned about where we live. It's all about our hearts. It's how we allow God to transform our hearts. If only Jesus would, which brings us to our final parameter, Jesus wants us to focus on our hearts. And if Jesus would only just spell things out clearly for his disciples, but no, nope, he goes on with yet another puzzle. Anything you eat passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer, giving a biology lesson there. But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. Food is only physical. It can only affect the physical. Food alone cannot defile our inner person. Physical pollution, no matter how corrupt, cannot cause spiritual or moral pollution. Ceremonies, rituals, and other external practices, they cannot cleanse a person spiritually. Failure to observe them cannot defile a person spiritually. Jesus continues, for from the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defile you. Eating with unwashed hands will never, never defile you. Righteousness is an inside-out transformation. It begins with the heart and works throughout the process of the disciple's life to produce external righteousness. The things that defile us come from unwashed hearts, not unwashed hands. What is the best way to know that someone is a follower of Christ? The evidence is in their hearts, one that goes from a stony heart to a tender and responsive one. God wants our hearts to be transformed. It's not about the clothes we wear or the car we drive or our big house. It's about how our hearts change, and it's about allowing others to see how Christ has changed their hearts. The story is told of a time when St. Francis Assisi invited a young monk to go with him to a local village to preach. And the monk was so excited, he was finally going to get to listen to what this master had to say. The monk spent all day walking around the village with St. Francis. They passed streets and alleys. They provided care to the poor and needy of the village. They easily helped over 100 people that day. Then they returned home, and the monk was so disappointed. Not once did St. Francis offer an address to a gathered crowd. He asked St. Francis why he didn't preach a single sermon that day. St. Francis responded, but we did. We preached everywhere we walked. Think about all the people who watched what we were doing. Instead of walking to one place to preach, we preached everywhere we walked. When we focus on God's word, we receive strength. We, we focus on the inside, we allow God to change our hearts, and when we focus on our hearts, we begin to live in ways that show how the love of Christ has changed our hearts. And with our changed hearts, we can make sure that our ears, our eyes, and our mouth are ever careful about what comes out of them or goes into them. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this reminder that uh, while we may be concerned or worried about what our outsides look like, that is not where your priority is. And we pray that we will remember that uh, the things that focus on the outside are not part of your law. 
not what's written on our hearts, it's what's inside. So we pray that everything we say and everything we do will point back to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So our sermon song